Hey, this is Frank Yosa, CEO of Ketone Aid. Thanks for joining us. Today, I want to talk about the brain, a little bit about sport, but more about brain function and a couple of clinical trials that show how the ketone ester works. But before that, make sure to subscribe and check out the other videos on the channel. We've got endless stuff about don't mix MCT oil with ketone ester, the difference between ketone esters and ketone salts, what does racemic mean, uh, don't mix it with caffeine or be aware if you mix it with caffeine that it might get multiplied, how to use it for intermittent fasting, just endless videos because it really is endless and the information that you'll find here will not be on any of the other channels and hopefully you can uh, pardon my leftover COVID hair the roots are coming out so that's almost gone so the first thing I want to talk about is Brendan Egan's paper let's do a screen share here let's see so this right here is intermittent running and cognitive performance after ketone ester ingestion. And here's Brendan Egan talking about it. What they did basically was they decided to do a, a study on sprinting. Most of the ketone ester stuff has been about endurance performance and not sprinting. So they wanted to try sprinting. And I said, I don't really think it's going to work because sprinting, you need glucose. I thought it might, it might work towards the end of multiple wind sprints that you might have more recovery and not have as much of a decline in performance. But I didn't think, I thought the top speed would actually be a little bit lower. So what I said was, while you're at it, why don't you just test their brains? And they have some uh, iPad exams that are clinically, that are used by other clinical trials to test the brain. And it says left, right, I'll show you here in a second. And I said, hey, why not test the brain while you're at it? And sure enough, the title of the paper focuses on uh, increased brain performance at the end of uh, at the end of a bunch of wind sprints. Wind sprints. So if you're not a wind sprinter, you know how does it affect you? It's similar to the end of your day. You start to crash mentally. Your brain starts to wear out. And then some people will take ketone esters at that time to kind of pop it back up. So let's see what he says here. And we did supply the ketone ester for this study a couple of years ago. So let's see. Study we used the uh, the K4 uh, ketone monoester from ketone aid, and we were able to elevate um, the blood ketone levels up to. So here he talks about how he elevated the ketone levels up to you know almost three millimolar. The problem there is he also wanted to do it on a fed state because you know rightfully so he thought that you know soccer uh, athletes don't tend to go into soccer trials on a fasted state like the other papers. But the problem is that the absorption of the ketone ester is drastically slower. So in the Cox paper, within 15, 30 minutes, it starts skyrocketing to three, if not four millimolar, where here, towards the end of the running, they start to hit the top, but who knows, it could actually you know, keep on going up. We don't, we don't know if that was even the peak. So it's drastically different. We don't recommend taking it with food for that exact reason. Um, the one thing is taking it with glucose, which is what they did here. They took periodically with glucose. But another thing is having food and then glucose and the ketones. The glucose and the ketones are fighting each other. Around two millimolar by the end of exercise. Uh, I won't get into this in too much detail in the interest of time, but just to say that... This also talks about uh, ketone ester keeping the, the lactate down. So if we jump to 1820, it talks about how they did the the testing of the brain. HB impairs um, uh, pyruvate hydrogenase activity, and so that could be a contributing factor in those very, very high intensity uh, repeated sprinter. All right, here we go. One thing, though, that was a positive and made a few headlines um, about our study was that we looked at cognitive function, and we were the first this time to look at the cognitive function in this manner. So we used three tests, but this is the one that, uh, that showed significance. It's um, a test used by a, a company, Cantab, is the um, iPad based um, cognitive testing. And so the way this test works is that an arrow appears on the screen and the person has to press, if it says direction at the top, they press the side of the iPad screen that, point, that the direction is pointed to. And if, um, if it, so that's correct. And if it says side, if the arrow is pointing to the right, they still have to point. So to that's the how it's, it's, it's a test, a quick test, left, right, and it's something that you can't really so learn. What we saw was that this, the way this test battery works is 160 of these decisions made in five minutes. So it was 100 or so decisions made in, in a few minutes. And here is the line. So the placebo group had more incorrect answers. So a little bit over two and it jumps to four. The ketone ester group flatlined. That initially I thought that they had you know, less 
uh, incorrect responses, but still, you know, worse than their baseline. No, they were straight across just as sharp at the beginning as they was as they were at the end. And that is just huge for a, a quarterback, a fourth quarter quarterback to be as sharp at the end versus the beginning or a pitcher to be as sharp mentally at the end of multiple innings versus the beginning. I mean, that's massive. And so I'll stop sharing that right now. So, but the interesting thing was they still used glucose. So I wonder if they didn't use glucose, whether the uh, performance might've actually increased, whether they would have actually gotten sharper. So less errors over time, because the, the glucose, it's not just about the ketones improving the brain. It's more, it's equally about the glucose impairing the brain. So you've got those two dynamics. So sure, they loaded them up with ketones and then loaded them up with glucose and they still, you know, were ahead. But, you know, what would have happened if they would have taken less glucose and probably far, far less ketones? So the more glucose you put in, the more ester you got to put in, and then it gets really expensive and it's just not sustainable. Now, most of our users will take tiny amounts, $5, $10 worth. But here they probably took, you know, $30, $40 worth of ketone ester with a whole bunch of food and glucose. It's just not necessary. Um, but, you know, time will tell. They'll do a clinical trial one day and, and change up the variables. So let's go to this next uh, paper. So this is uh, Diet Modulates Brain Network Stability, a Biomarker for Brain Aging in Young Adults. So this is not sports related. So what they did was they they tested both they tested both the a regular Western diet, then they tested the ketogenic diet, and then they tested a Western diet with ketone ester, again with food, with glucose, and what they found were an improvement in the brain's signaling. And we can go over the brain uh, energy gap problem that Mary Newport explains the best, and we have a whole podcast with her as well, Dr. Mary Newport. Um, and what, what they found was that the ketogenic diet and the ketone ester performed similarly and more beneficial to the brain. Another interesting thing they also found was that the ketone esters might peak in the blood at 30 to 45 minutes. And I've got a completely separate video about this, but it's not about ketones in the blood. People always chase ketone numbers in the blood. It's about leaving the blood and going to where it needs to go. So the, the brain at 90 minutes, the ketones were still flatline and still in there, even though the glucose had spiked and come out, the ketones were still in the brain. So we don't know how long it stays in there. So it's not a, only about the blood, it's about you know, bringing it to your brain. And uh, let's see, let me bring up Mary Newport's article here. So Mary Newport's article on medium.com, she talks about ketones can fill the age-related energy brain energy gap so what uh steve kunane in canada has been looking at is what they identified as a brain energy gap by consuming uh, by using these scans uh to study healthy adults of all ages in cognitively healthy older adults on a typical diet there's a gap of about eight oh, sorry seven percent between how much their energy energy the brain needs and how much it actually gets so let me explain that. This is just a regular diet. There's uh, just a glucose impairment. The glucose can't fully fuel the brain. Even if you take a bunch of gel packs, it just maxes out. So the average person on a Western diet, non-keto diet, is functioning at 93%. And people that are below that will start feeling uh, noticeable symptoms of just brain fog or fatigue, or whatnot. And what ketone esters do and ketones do in general is they fill that void because it's a different pathway to the brain so instead of you know that 93 percent it uh it helps fill the brain up and take it to 100 percent now some people might say so it's not like a stimulant like a caffeine that will overclock the brain so different people will feel it differently so i don't feel it and i wish i did feel it in my brain the same way that other people do They'll, they'll take it and be like, oh my God. And I say, well, you know, what are you eating? You might not be eating very well because you probably have this brain gap and you're feeling, you're just feeling normally, just going back to like normal sharpness, not, you know, overclocking with Ritalin and, and, you know, caffeine stimulants. Um, 
So I don't feel as much, perhaps I have less of a brain gap, but then someone might say, well, you know, I'm, I'm keto, so I, don't, I already make my own ketones, so I don't need to drink it. Of course, you don't need to drink it, but many people will still feel it in their brain, even if they are keto. So is it because of the brain energy gap? Possibly, maybe they're, they are doing better than the 93%, but you know, if they go from 95 to 100%, they're noticing uh, a difference. So let's go back to... So this is the paper, the diet modulates the brain. So what I, um, yes, yeah, so you can you can go over that uh, by yourself, and I'll add a link in in the comments. So what I find interesting about that paper was they did it, they didn't do it with, they still had glucose in there, and glucose they they say in the paper is what is harmful to the to the brain system. Um, so what would happen if you did both a ketogenic diet? And ketone ester, or even a more easy to adhere to, like a diabetic diet, just cutting out the high carbs, the fruit, the rice, bread, pasta. And then I like to say fruit again because we can have a half an hour discussion in another video about fruit being, you know, the devil. The devil, if you have a brain energy gap. If you don't have that gap, you don't, you know, don't have any brain fog and you've got perfect mental clarity, then then great, keep on eating that fruit. But if you do have that problem, Taking ketone esters might help a little bit or help a lot, but it's exponentially better coupled with cutting out those fast carbs. So you don't have to go fully keto, but at least cutting out those those fast carbs because the ketone ester and the keto and the glucose kind of fight with each other. So uh, different protocols that people take. Some people will take. Um, so we have the the KE4 is our first drink ketone ester, super concentrated, like 50% ketone ester and you've got to dilute it. It's a little bit rougher to take, and then the much easier to take KE1, and you can dilute that as well. Um, people will take half a bottle to a full bottle of this uh, twice a day, the KE1. Um, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. Some people will use it so that they can skip a meal. My cousin, he said that he would normally be super sharp from 7 a.m. to 12 and 1, then he'd get hungry, then he'd get ravished, and then he'd eat a whole bunch, and then he'd crash, and his second half of the day was never as productive. So he decided to take the ketone ester at 12 and one. And what that did was allowed him to skip the, the meal, which is half the problem, and then fuel the brain with the ketones. And then he just doubled his productivity. Um, the productivity that he has at 7 a.m. to noon, he's now having that from noon. And he takes you know a third of a bottle every couple hours from you know 12 until dinner time. And then at dinner time, he eats his one meal a day. So that's one way to take it. Uh, so some people take you know, small sips throughout the day. Some people will take it first thing in the morning or a couple hours after waking is a little bit better. You know, let yourself kind of wake up and then take it from there. Um, they'll skip breakfast is one way to take it because you have an overnight fast. You're already starting to make ketones. Even if you're not keto, you might start making ketones. And then adding ketone esters there really makes it uh, so that you can, it's more economical because you can use less. Um, but if you're determined to have breakfast, then go ahead and have a breakfast. Try to keep it a little bit lower carb, you know, eggs or something. I'm vegan, so I, you know, that wouldn't be something for me, but avoiding, you know, a cereal or juice and, and then taking ketone ester uh, a couple hours later. You really want to have an empty stomach. So between breakfast and lunch, and then some people then take it between uh, lunch and dinner. And that's the, the main protocol people take it. Um, and people have also asked, does it stop working? Like you know, ketone salts. I just did another video on ketone salts. Why they stop working? It has to do with what you're feeling is the salt load, the benefits of the salt load, and then you're also feeling that they add a lot of caffeine, and the caffeine stops working over time. As far as ketone ester, I've got maybe one report of someone that said that they they stopped buying it for a while, and his theory was the brain gap was he had a cumulative benefit over time. So he started that you know ninety percent, but then he was taking the ketone ester and his baseline was going up. So it wasn't that he was still having the same feeling at the end of being, you know, 95, 100% level of sharpness, but his, his baseline was higher and higher every day so that the impact was less over time. So in theory, if he gets off the ketone ester and starts eating poorly again, then that brain gap might go down again, and then he would take the ketone esters again. But for the most part, we've had people taking it for two years, even, you know, super healthy people for longevity reasons, which is a whole other uh, 
video. Um, but for the most part, there shouldn't be any, any need to cycle out of it, like caffeine, like a stimulant where you want to stop taking it for a while. Um, I, I do take it for sleep and I have found that you, that you might have to cycle it for the sleep benefits, but for the cognitive benefits, you know, it's, it's not the case. It's just another fuel source that's just more efficient and, uh, the brain prefers ketones over glucose, but that is not to be confused with. If there's glucose there, even though it prefers ketones, it wants ketones, the glucose does butt in front. So you really have to uh, do both sides of the coin. And if you were to pick one, I would pick cutting the fruit first. That's just, not fruit, but just fast sugars. If you're having brain problems, cut the fast sugars first and foremost, even before buying the drink. Do that first and then say, oh, wow, I feel so much better. And then say, oh, imagine if I added you know, ketone esters on top of that. So I hope you learned something about, you know, ketone esters in the brain. Um, you can uh, email me, frank at ketoneaid.com. Join the community on ketoneaid.com at the top. Uh, on our Facebook page, people talk about different ways that they use it, different protocols. And leave, you leave some comments. Uh, I like hearing comments. It kind of motivates me to keep on doing these videos and jump over to the, to the next one. Thanks.